Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. It's part 100 today and we are bringing up the century and raising the bat in style. Firstly, we face Hamilton in the SPFL Trust Trophy quarterfinal, one of the toughest tests we could possibly face in the competition. And then, five days later, it's away to Germany to face one of the Red Bull franchise. It's Leipzig, a European giant on the road. And technically, we might still need a result to get through. That's despite the success beforehand. So if you're looking forward to all of that, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. A massive thank you for supporting me all the way to 100 episodes. I don't know if we'll quite squeeze another 100 in, but I'm certainly looking forward to the next few years, and I hope you are as well. So Hamilton and Leipzig, it doesn't get much bigger at this stage. Subscribe down below to stay up to date. There's links to all the playlists in the eye above. And we're going to have loads of live streams over the month of June on Twitch. You can find a link in the description below. If you haven't already, please do go and follow over there. It makes a massive, massive difference. But let's go and talk about what's been happening off the pitch. Because we've had a very successful stint. Bar one game. So you were with me as we faced Kef and Druids and Emlada at home in the Europa League. They were very good performances and we had a couple of emphatic ones afterwards. The first of those was a 6-0 win at home to Buckley. Max Dean with a brace, Cole Lacey with a brace, Williams and Cannell with one apiece. Against Colwyn Bay, it was a 9-0 victory. We always seem to obliterate them for some reason. Kane Waters got two, Luke Williams got three, Matty Whitaker got two, and then Malone and Lloyd got one each. Then came the disappointment. A 2-0 defeat in the Czech Republic, Thomas Matijowski got the goals. He's a great out player, but look at the standard. We underestimated these guys. It was a great result to beat them 1-0 at home. But if I could have that striker now, I would certainly take him. He's better than Greg Pringle for sure. And he's better than the strikers we've got this year. So a 2-0 defeat there, but it's been backed up with five straight defeats. Most crucially, one in the Europa League against Maritimo. But before that, we beat Airbus 4-0. Tom Jones, Daniel Anderson, Chris Broom and Luke Williams with one each. A 3-0 win at Lynetley, Williams, Lacey and Duffy getting the goals. And a 3-0 win at Cardiff Met Uni with Williams getting two and Kane Walters getting on the score sheet as well. The 2-1 win at home to Maritimo was the most important one. Kane Walters again with a crucial goal and young Cole Lacey off the bench. What an impact he made to be fair to him. He's just starting to score goals and improve again now. Him and Gwyn Morgan starting to look like potential young superstars. And for Lacey, we've given him a new three-year deal. We're trying to get players tied down long-term. And I feel like it's starting to make a difference. We're also actually starting to see the consequences of this league reputation increasing. Because clubs across the division are now offering three, four and five-year deals. Which hopefully means they won't lose so many to the non-league in England. We'll wait and see if that's the case. We followed it up last time, note with our backup side getting a 9-0 win away at West End. They're not even in the North and South. So they're a regional side... And unfortunately, they just met us on a bad day. Joe Duffy got a hat-trick, Max Dean scored five, and Cole Lacey got one again. It was a really good performance, and we got everyone well-rested. So for these two games against Hamilton and Leipzig, and then the big ones against Aberystwyth and TNS not long after, we're going to have our best squad available. So we're going to go and have a look at the lineup for today in a minute. But firstly, a very quick bit of transfer news. We've of course got the young centre-half joining in January, that one from the Czech Republic himself. He's going to be a good signing for us and I'm hoping he'll contribute towards the end of the season. Scott Furlong agreed in the last episode for a slightly lower wage than previously. So we'll only actually be paying about three and a half grand a week for him. And what that means is both in January and at the end of the season, we're really going to be turning this squad around a little bit. You can see some of the big long contracts we've offered out now. Whittaker, Broome, Malone, five-year deals. Wickens as well. Jones and Lloyd on four-year deals. We're trying to progress for the future. We've got some of the youngsters tied down for three. And then there's this sort of group of backup players who have been our stars for five, six, seven, eight years. Most of them have dropped out of the first team over the last 12 months. And at this point, we've got to decide what to do with them. I've tried to buy Estem Weaver. He rejected us because he wants more of a wage than we can offer. But the likes of Daniel Williams, Cameron Badebo, both asked to leave for a new challenge next summer. Luca Cannell's going to be hitting 30 this season. Ratcliffe, the backup keeper, is starting to decline. Archie Woods, only rated two star now. Max Dean is fifth choice striker. Joe Duffy, not been the same this season. And Daniel Anderson, yes, a little bit younger. Yes, playing well when he's in the team. But not quite the standard of player we were hoping for. So I've got to be honest, this summer could be an important one for us. 
We're going to try and get some of them off to other Welsh clubs and we'll keep offering that in January and in the summer, even if it harms us in the short term. But I don't think any of them will be forthcoming because of the wages and because of the fact they've not succeeded in Europe. But it is going to be a big summer because we won't replace them for the same level of wage. And that's probably why they've been here so long. If they're happy to stay and be backup players, what is the incentive to change them? Maybe we just go for a young backup 11 next year. We'll wait and see how it pans out. But for now, we're going to go and get into the first of today's two games. Linfield are away from home at Inverness. We'll be facing the winners of that in a semi-final. And by the way, in a semi-final as well, is TNS. They will be facing Motherwell, who are in the Scottish Championship. They're currently right up there near the top, just five points behind today's opponent, Hamilton. That's with a game in hand as well. So we've probably got two of the strongest sides we could face between us. But great to see TNS in the last four. Now can we go and join them? 11 changes to be made from our last game. Loads of opposition instructions. Let's go and introduce you to the team that will be facing Hamilton Academical today. So the usual few changes made to the substitutes bench. And this is our 11 for today. All with a light match load due to that rest against West End. It's George Wickens in goal. McDonald and Weaver the fullbacks with Price and Matty Whitaker at centre half. Harvey Lloyd, Patrick Malone, Chris Broom and Tom Jones at a midfield diamond. And Williams alongside Walters up front, both getting goals galore now and both starting to find their stride. A good substitutes bench, plenty of quality as needed. Now let's see if we can get out on top in this game. It should be a very good opportunity for us, but can we deliver our best on the night? Well, we're unlikely to recognise many names at this stage of the series. However, Anthony Ralston on the bench and Connor Hazard, the keeper, are two that I do. Let's go and tell the lads to impress us. We've got a few of the younger ones motivated for today. As George Wickens takes the captain's armband, we head into the game against Hamilton. They're playing a 4-4-2, we're playing the diamond. In fact, actually, they've dropped to a 4-4-1-1. So can we get on top? As McLeod takes the free kick, oh, it's a good effort. George Wickens makes a comfortable save. There's seven minutes on the clock and we want to counter at speed. He rolls actually behind him to Whitaker, gives it to Kai McDonald. Can he bring it forward over halfway? Chips it over towards Tom Jones. He's got Walters with him, goes alone instead. And that's why I'm starting to get excited about this kid. We always knew it was a very good talent. But as the standard of our squad has improved, players like McDonald have come back, players like Williams and Broom have come in, he has still stayed a five-star potential player. And he's starting to get closer and closer to it. Really good goal from Tom Jones. As Austin gets it in the middle for Hamilton. It's only 1-0. We don't want to get excited yet. As Smith beats a couple of men in midfield to Austin. They're still having a good share of the possession here. Let they give it away to McDonald. Malone goes over to Walters. I tell you what, we're doing them on the counter-attack, aren't we? This time the shot saved Walters straight at a keeper. It's out for a corner kick, but it could have been 2-0 in the 10th minute there. As there's a corner to be taken by Harvey Lloyd. In swing and delivery to the back post to Williams who loses out. And Walters chases all the way back. Fair play to him. Takes on his man as well. Wins the foul. Exceptional play. Really good centre-forward work that. And he wins us the free kick in a dangerous area. 15 gone, dominant so far. And we've got the lead. It's been the perfect start. But it's a free kick on the right for Hamilton. Good dangerous position as Malone does well to head away. Ramsey picks it up and gets it back out to the set piece taker. Nearly said throw in taker there. Gets into the box. Oh, he's bamboozled him. Yes, then Weaver done all ends up there. Smith looks dangerous. Good set piece taker. Won a penalty there. Now, is this one going to hit the post as well? Or do we not have such luck? Miller steps up. Good save, George Wickens. Wonderful goalkeeping. Excellent work. He's earned his new deal there. And he's suddenly the best player on the pitch. As Smith delivers the corner. Can he make amends? Wickens comes and claims that as well. Exceptional goalkeeping from our number one. And we've not come to expect anything else at this stage, have we? As we head into first half stoppage time, Whitaker's got it in his own six-yard box. I presume from a short goal kick or free kick or something. As McDonald goes long over the top towards Tom Jones. This is the problem with Hamilton's tactic. As he lays in Walters for the goal. Oh, it looked just off. It was tight. But no VAR here. So 1-0 it remains. But that's the problem with the way Hamilton are playing. Tom Jones is getting acres of space in that number 10 position. It remains 1-0 at half time. We've had two or three great chances. But that penalty could have made it all level. George Wickens the hero on this occasion. And into the second half, we need to be a little bit more careful at the back. As Hamilton are back with a throw on the left-hand side, they give it into Austin and now Ramsey. 
The last thing we want to do is concede an equaliser. I'd like to nick a second on a break and then we can start to relax a bit. As Ramsey tries to slide it through, Whitaker reads the game really well. We've talked about that positioning attribute in our tactical specials. We know how important it is. And it proves so there as he chips up to Jones. Loads of time on the ball again. Plays a 1-2 with Williams. Puts in Walters. And there's his 14th for the season. One goal and an assist for Tom Jones. And alongside Wickens, he's been the hero of the day. Excellent work from the young number 10. And with 25 minutes to go, I'm going to go and make a couple of changes. So Malone's not had his best match. We'll bring Williams on for him. I'll also take off Williams up front. Luke Williams, that is. For, let's give Max Dean a go because he can't play in midweek. And then we'll leave the last sub five more. It will either be Weaver replaced by Boys or Broom replaced by Cannell. Weaver's on his yellow, still a 6.4, it'll be Morgan Boys. Since he's rejected us actually Weaver, his performances have digressed slightly, so we'll have to have a look at him, as Butterfield gets it on the right to Austin. Back to Brown the fullback. We don't want Hamilton to make this a grandstand finish here, as it goes wide to Smith, who's caused chaos all game. He gets towards the byline. Good work from Broom to back up, but it's still into the box towards McDonald, who heads clear, and Brannan picks it up at left back. Down the line to Ramsey. They're still not hugely committing Hamilton, even at 2-0 with 10 to go. But they are going to create a chance here by the looks of it. Miller who missed that penalty. Switch of play to Smith. He skimmed Morgan Boys. Different left back opponent. Does exactly the same outcome. But it's straight at Wickens. It's an easy save. And it remains comfortably 2-0 with 10 to go. As it's a throw on the left hand side again for our visitors. Ramsey back to Brown and Welsh. He gets it to Brown again. Into the box to Miller. Oh, it's a great save by Wickens. Tips it onto the bar. I don't know what he was doing when it dropped back down. Price puts it behind for a corner. But he's made a couple of unbelievable saves. Yes, we've been the better side. We've had much the better of it. As Jones runs away again, we'll hold that fort. He's gone all the way through himself. There's a man in the middle. Jones goes alone. And he's forced it out for a corner. Probably could have laid it across there. But we can forgive him after today. I've got to say, Wickens, for all of our dominance, the penalty save and that one a minute ago, both absolutely sublime. And that's kept us to victory here. And it's now actually level in terms of the shots. Hamilton have got a better expected goals because of the penalty. But we've done our bit, as Hazard clears it downfield. McDonald heads away to Jones. Plays it back as a 1-2 from the head as well. Over the top towards Max Dean. He might have been offside. The flag goes up. It was straight at a keeper anyway. But I think it's going to be a victory. Surely they can't get two now. As McDonald heads away across as far as Brannan. Only 15 seconds of the allotted time left. Boys heads away to Tom Jones. Gifts it out for a throw. <laughs> Why did we see that? He just hoofed it. Out for a throw by the corner flag. The final whistle will presumably go any second. But it was an amusing way to finish if nothing else. Whitaker clears it. Wickens thought about flying out for some reason there. Max Dean brought down for a free kick. Yellow card to the left back. Why on earth have we seen that last 30 seconds? A bizarre end, a comfortable victory. It could have been very different though. George Wickens with a first half penalty save. A stunning one with five minutes to go as well. And he's deservedly man of the match. A good warm up again for a big Europa League game. We'll come back in a moment for RB Leipzig away and to have a look at the permutations. I'll see you there. Well, it's the deciding day in the Europa League group stages, but we are back with a youth intake preview. We should be really optimistic about this group of young players. There's a healthy number of fullbacks, which we seem to have a right back every year. We've had Burgess, we've had Morgan, we've had Jack Hankin, we've had many more. At least one of our centre backs looks promising. A centre midfielder who's a top prospect. Not worried about the wide midfielder. An attacking midfielder we should keep an eye on. Not sure we can do with any more of them. And one good Welsh right midfielder from Bangor. So actually, not a bad line up there. It does say the fullbacks aren't the best. It does say there's no defensive midfielders or strikers coming through. And there are very few good wingers, which isn't going to worry us. But if we can get a spine of the team that could be a backup team next year, that'd be amazing. But as our quality improves, with people like Archie Woods being two-star, they've got to be very special youngsters through the youth intake. We've also made a bold decision today regarding injuries. Harvey Lloyd has taken a painkilling injection. He's only got a bruised ankle. I'm not sure why he needs it, but he's going to be involved in this match. We're missing Max Dean, who's unregistered anyway. We're missing Elliot Andrew, who's got an injury too. But Harvey Lloyd is going to play through the pain barrier and hopefully see us through. The reason I say hopefully is because despite our win against Maritimo, Mladar picked up a point against Leipzig. That leaves them on seven and us on ten. Now, the head-to-head -head record on goal difference is better for the Czech side. 
which means if we lose this game and they beat Maritimo, we will go out in third place. Yes, we'll be in Europe after Christmas. We'll go into the Europa Conference. It might actually be a good thing, not financially with some of the contracts we've offered, but certainly in terms of coefficient, I think we could have a good go at the competition. But obviously, we want to be in the Europa League after Christmas, and a draw or any result for Maritimo does that for us. So that's what we have to hope for at the moment. But if you looked at these two games, you would expect a Leipzig win and a Mladar win. So probably we will be in trouble. Having said that, because of that draw, if we manage to somehow sneak a point here at Leipzig, we then win the group and go straight to the last 16. So it could be two or three very different scenarios today. So let's go and find out which one it is as we head to Germany for a big game in Europe. The same 11 will start with just Lacey coming onto the bench for the cup tied Dean who has got a knock as well. So that means you all know our 11 very well. We'll be hoping for a similar outcome to the Hamilton game. What I will say this year that we have struggled with a little bit is the fact that we've not got many players homegrown in the nation, let alone at the club. So the likes of Jack Hankin where we've lost him, it's not actually affected the homegrown at the club thing too much. But we can only actually have 19 in the squad because we've only got two players homegrown in Wales. Now that will change as other players reach 21, but for now, it does restrict us a little bit. So let's go and tell the lads to play without any pressure. We're going to drop to a balanced mentality here in Germany. We've just got to try and sneak a point, because otherwise we have to rely on other results. Into the first half we go, let's see if we can do it. As Joswiak's got a free kick on the left, only a few minutes on the clock, and Price heads it away well. But no one really challenged him for the second ball. Simikas recycles it, back to Benecki. Can they get the through ball or are we going to press them back? It's out wide to the right-hand side. They're keeping possession well. They look really confident here. The through ball finds Josviak. Kai McDonald lost him. Wickens is beaten. It's 1-0 Leipzig. And as we expected at the start here, we're going to be relying on a favour from a Portuguese side. As we've got a throw on the left-hand side with Yestem Weaver. Walters picks it up from him on the left. I was trying to get the latest scores to work, but it's got that little glitch so it doesn't scroll down. As Harvey Lloyd picks it up to Price again. He gives it to Whitaker. We're in their half and we camped him, which is great. As Malone gets it again to Broom. Can we find the opening? McDonald gets there ahead of Joswiak. Lays in Luke Williams, who goes forced wide out in the area. Back to McDonald again. He's still in the box, though. If he gets brought down it, we're in a good position. Malone delivers to Tom Jones, though. Two shots blocked. It's back to Malone again. And then he rattles the crossbar. Oh, what a couple of chances they were. It was a cracking opportunity, but it's all gone wrong. All of our games have disappeared again. They were just there for a moment and they vanished. So I think we're going to be relying on the little flashes on the screen as Price gets it out from the goal kick. He's going left to Weaver. We are in this game. We're certainly not been out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Price goes long. Walters gets on the end of the flick. Beats the sliding tackle. Has to score. Does score. Kane Walters on the break. He scored another massive, massive goal. It is 1-1 here at RB Leipzig. And now, the other result doesn't matter. We'll keep an eye on the table to see what's actually going on. At the moment, it must be level, because it's 8 points and 2. So it must be nil-nil still. As Kipre's blocked back to the centre-half. Did he go off the referee there? And Kunku on the left-hand side to Kipre. He's got time. Jones intercepts it, though. Gives it to Williams, to Jones. Walters is in again. He's got a defender to beat this time, though. Oh, he tries to sneak and catch people out. Doesn't try to beat the defender, tries to just sort of toe poke it with no backlift. And it ends up going through straight into the keeper's arms. It was a good effort though. He had half a chance. The results are sort of flashing and disappearing again. I'm not quite sure how to fix that. But at half time, it is 1-1 between Leipzig and Bangor City. And at the moment, we're actually dominating the stats. We're doing enough to win this game and enough to get through. Now can we get the second goal we probably deserve? We've got a throw on the right-hand side again with Kai McDonald this time. Plays a 1-2 with Williams. Back to Whitaker. You've got to say this year, our defence has been so much better. We've barely conceded a goal as it's a through ball to Tom Jones. Gray saved the first time, hits the post the second. How many chances are we going to miss? We've had enough chances to win two matches here. And it's still 1-1. How are Leipzig clinging on? I mean, it's a thoroughly professional performance. It's so encouraging for the future. But it's a real worry to me that we haven't taken these. Broom's on a booking and he's knackered. I'm going to take him off for now. Just give him a rest. Luca Canell on the left side of the diamond. We'll worry about the rest later. As McDonald throws in from the right again. Plays it to Luke Williams and Malone. McDonald playing a 1-2 with him. Back to Whitaker. Finds Harvey Lloyd. Whitaker again. 
And here is Harvey Lloyd for a third time to Price. Switches right hand side to McDonald. There's three up in support in the box if he can find them. Gets towards the byline. Back to Malone. Someone deliver it please. McDonald does just that. And Sigurdsson gets it away just as Walters was attacking it. Whitaker gets it back on halfway though. Leipzig can't get out. It's been an unbelievable display going forward. As Whitaker gives it to Price again, you feel like something's coming. Jones flicks it on for Walters. Back to Weaver, the left back. I'm not sure he needed to do it, but we're still in possession. We're still in the ascendancy. Weaver beats one challenge, then gives it away. Harvey Lloyd forces his man back, but Sigurdsson comes away. Great tackle from Lloyd again. Jones finds Malone. Through ball to Walters. Unbelievable pass. Patrick Malone is coming into his own here. A couple of years of very frustrating times for him at this club. But he has laid in Kane Walters, who is coming of age tonight. Jack Stacey's just come on for Leipzig. Former Luton Town man. Gone to Bournemouth in real life. But he can't do anything at the moment. It's 2-1 to Bangor City. It's a through ball to Tom Jones again. I am in dreamland. We are in dreamland. Bangor City fans are ecstatic. Tom Jones makes it three. This feels like a coming of age performance. RB Leipzig won. Bangor City 3, and with 7 minutes to go, is Simicast with the ball forward. Weaver intercepts it. Stacey gets it at right back to Bornau. I didn't notice him on the bench, Stacey, when going through the lineups. That seems a bit weird to me. I feel like I would have spotted that. Adamola Lookman's got it now as well. It's a wonderful side. Price heads the ball away. Stacey will get there first. Maybe someone we could sign. He must be in his 30s now. Sigurdsson to Benecki. Out to Stacey again. Crosses early. Back to Ludman at the edge of the box. Finds Nkunku. Just wide of the post. Malone absolutely shattered. We will get on Daniel Williams. And Williams up front not had the best game. So he's going to be replaced by Joe Duffy. Incredible performances across the board here. It is 3-1 to Bangor City. And we have not got away with anything here. This is by no means a smash and grab. This is by no means a good counter-attacking display. This is dominance against a German giant. As Duffy gets in, I think the flag's up. But it's almost 4 what a performance from Bangor City. Unbelievable night. I think Mladar is still drawing, by the way. So this result is completely pointless. But it has been relentless. It's been unbelievable. And considering the performance in the Czech Republic, where we were pretty soundly beaten, this display has been a very pleasant surprise. As the corner into the back post is headed away by Price. He's been unbelievable back there. Gives it away to Tom Jones. Finds Walters. Still on a hat-trick. Will he pass? Tries to go alone. It's into the side netting. It was a thunderous strike. But as we come towards full time, they won't score two now. Benecki gets one back. Wickens can't quite get a hand to it. But it's 3-2 and the four minutes of stoppage time are up. The final whistle has to go any second. And that is arguably the best performance of the save. Away from home against a side like RB Leipzig. That's an incredible display. A coming of age moment for Bangor City. And this European ride, as we go through the media reaction, might be about to get very, very exciting. It was nil-nil in the other game after all of that, but we win the group on 13 points. Leipzig could have fallen out there, but as it is, they sneak through as well. But it means we skip to the last 16, we can focus on the semi-final of the SPFL Trust Trophy. We pick up about one and a half million for the win and for the first place in the group stage. And Malone is the star of the show. Harvey Lloyd out for a couple of days. Patrick Malone, a superstar. Let's have a look at the schedule for when we're next going to be back. And I think we'll come back midway through January. Seems about right to spread it out. We could have done TNS and Landudno, the two sides below us around Christmas. But then early in January, we've got a League Cup semi-final against TNS. And if we win that, we'll probably win the final. If you did enjoy this episode though, that unbelievable performance at RB Leipzig and a comprehensive win against Hamilton too, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on for daily FM21 content. There's links to all the playlists and the new food channel in the eye above. Our first video proper is coming this weekend over there. And then we're going to have loads of streams this month over on Twitch as well. Euros based stuff, loads of FM streams too. So check that link out in the description below. And please do go and give it a follow if you haven't already. A massive thank you for your support as we reach the century. And it sort of was a fitting performance, wasn't it? To reach the century and do that to RB Leipzig just shows how far we've come. I'll see you next time to find out if we can continue the trend. And hopefully we'll have a good European draw too.